Let's now shift our attention to the other big story that we are tracking in fine print. The stage is set, and this time around it is Japan's Hiroshima city. The leaders of the group of seven nations have gathered, and the agenda is also set. Now, the leaders who are taking part in the G7, of course, includes Joe Biden, Rishi Sunak, Justin Trudeau, Olaf Scholz, George Maloney, and Fumio, Fumio Kishida. They've already begun their bilateral meetings and are preparing for the big day tomorrow. The longest shadows, however, will be caused by two nations that are not even present at the summit. When the leaders enter into the big hall, it will be Russia and China, the two elephants in the room who are not present, who would not be present in the room, who will dominate the agenda. The leaders' plan is to tighten the sanctions on Russia and, according to Reuters, with steps that are aimed at energy and export aiding Moscow's war effort. The new moves will try and target sanctions evasions involving third nations. It also is seeking to undermine Russia's future energy production and curb trade that supports Russia's military. This, of course, is the stated objective of what the leaders of the G7 want to discuss. On Russia's invasion of Ukraine, there are differences in terms of strategy on how to end the conflict. The United States does not want to talk about a diplomatic path until it ceases to have the spring military offensive plays out. But parts of Europe are not on the same page. Addressing the other elephant in the room, China, of course, has emerged as a major world leader. Its exit from the zero-COVID lockdown has become a bit of a threat to the West. And not just trade, Xi Jinping is, in fact, looking at acing diplomacy as well. And China could be G7's biggest weak point, because divisions appear to be most notable on this issue. The countries are grappling on how to warn China, but at the same time, to not alienate a powerful trade partner. Remember, China is the world's second largest economy. To sustain the world market, coordinating with China is almost inevitable. Now, these are heads of the world's most advanced and the richest democracies. There are differences on issues which will have to be sought through. And experts say that differing opinions only work in favor of their arch rivals, especially because lately the West has been touting about its unity. But what is clear is that neither the United States nor Europe appear to be on the same page on how to deal with China or to end the war in Ukraine. Now, to give us more perspective in terms of what is likely to unfold at the G7 meetings tomorrow, we are being joined in by my colleague Sidan Simul, who is presently in Hiroshima at the moment. Sidan, bring us up to speed with what the leaders will be discussing at the G7 summit. Well, Mohammed, in the next 15 minutes, it will be 12 a.m. here in uh, Hiroshima. A new day, of course, uh, will dawn a day when, of course, the summit begins. And the focus, as you pointed out, remains Russia and China, but other issues as well, like clean technology, artificial intelligence, and uh, how countries can form consensus uh, on resilient supply chains, something that India has also been talking about. Now, first day, we will see the leaders who have already arrived in the city going to the Hiroshima. Hiroshima Peace Memorial paying homage to those who died due to the atomic uh, bomb attack uh, which happened in 1945. But then it will be hard work and hard business as leaders chalk out a joint statement. Uh, on Sunday, the joint statement will be released and it is given that a new set of sanctions will be announced against Russia and a warning perhaps for China as well, whose aggressive actions has been a worry for many countries in the region. We know that countries like India uh, and Indonesia, Australia, right. Vietnam have already been invited as well. And these countries have been invited to send a message uh, of free and open Indo-Pacific policy that uh, the Japanese side has has been championing. Absolutely indeed, Sidan. Thank you very much indeed for joining us from Hiroshima in Japan. It's pretty late, as you pointed out. Do get some good sleep. We'll, of course, come back to you as more details begin to emerge at the G7 summit meetings where the leaders have, of course, gathered for some pretty important decisions that have to be taken on the issue of China and also on the issue of the war in Ukraine.